heavens, I look old. Oh, it's so horrible, you know. You look at yourself and you just see how much you change. Ah, it's frustrating. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Like, you can literally see your body starting to give you small hints that you are starting to die slowly but surely but anyway i am not here to talk about that kind of depressive stuff i'm here to talk about other depressive stuff that needs to be talked about because what in heavens are the current western governments think they are doing like trying to absolutely remove freedom of speech the the masks the superstition that if you wear a paper mask around a small area in your face this is where viruses actually gather do you understand this this the hands they gather there where you touch things if you touch anything that that's where they get you you know in the hair it gets stuck there the hair collects it all and you're just walking around with a humongous amount of bacteria and virus in your hair. And this is why showering at least once a day is highly recommended, especially when you come home uh, from work or studies or whatever. You really want to be more virus-free, more disease-free, then when you come home from work, take a good shower, okay? that helps remove most of the viruses that you contracted during your outdoor activities on that day. And look, scientists know that. Most doctors seem to know that. There are doctors that are coming out and have come out throughout the entire, the last two years to try to tell people. And they were blocked, banned, censored, for God knows what reason. Like, it doesn't make sense that people who actually, because they say, oh, the experts, the experts, the experts have been wrong for the last 10 years so far. Like, every now and then they get one thing right. But, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? It, it it's just weird it doesn't make any sense now the question is what to do about it well refuse and resist that's it don't need to be in an aggressive way look that's exactly what they want they want you to do it in an aggressive way no 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 no, no. what you need to do is just demand that the laws that you have that the constitution that you have are followed that's it you need to go up there and demand that the law is and i'm not talking about the last made up laws arbitrary laws or temporary laws or cri uh, crisis war laws i'm not talking about those latest things that governments are desperately trying to push uh, on people no, no 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 then go to the constitution take a look at your national constitution and i'm not talking about the u.s i'm sick and tired of hearing them talk about their constitution and yet they don't seem to do much about it like it's it's basically currently it's the their superior uh, court that is is stopping all the things because the people like uh, fair enough the people try to vote for their favorite candidate more like a, 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 a middle finger to the whole system than, than properly because there was a good reason, you understand? Like Trump, Trump was a middle finger. Why do you think he, he raised to power? Like how do you think that he dethroned Jeb Bush from a certain victory? Um, because he was saying things that all Americans were thinking. Um, and this is why, and especially after what they did to, to, to Ron Paul. And Ron Paul kind of, for whatever reason that we will never know, 
because I don't know if you know, like Ron Paul is not that innocent a person. Like, uh, sure, he seems to work for the good, but um, for the good guys. But he was the right, uh, like he was the hidden hand of Ronald Reagan. Like he, he was one of the architects. Ron Paul, I'm talking about Ron Paul. He was one of the arti architects, or seemed to be, of the whole Star Wars uh, thing that broke uh, the Soviet Union's back. Do you understand? He's a very intelligent man, and for whatever reason, they, they like he and uh, I remember, I remember, I still remember. Oh, what's the name of that fellow who talks about reptilians and Alex Jones? I still remember Alex Jones screaming at his full lungs, um, threatening Ron Paul because in the two weeks previous to the caucus, to the Republican caucus, uh, Ron Paul disappeared. And the last thing that Ron Paul said before he disappeared was for, for his fans or his, his supporters to, to behave, literally. And then he vanished. Uh, so it's like he was there for a purpose and he was going to win. He was going to win. But... Uh, whatever deal he made with the Republicans. And then suddenly, suddenly we start hearing about Ron Paul and Ron Paul starts getting more and more uh, credibility in the Republican Party. So whatever reason that he pulled out, I might think that uh, the sudden appearance of his son might have something to do with it. So. He might have struck a deal with the Republican Party about, you know, okay, okay, I'm old, so yeah, I'll, I'll do what you say as long as you kind of push my son forward. We don't know. Like, this is an educated guess. Um, <clears throat> I have many politicians from all over the world in my family. So based on what I heard and seen during my childhood, and youth, uh, I'm guessing that this might have been the way that that it has gone. Um, you know, that's that's what politicians basically do, uh, are supposed to do even. They're supposed to negotiate, right? Negotiate position to a, the better possible outcome. Not many of them are currently good at it. It, it also has a reason. Um, that's something that most people don't talk about, but in many countries, I don't know if in every country, but in many countries, uh, the most incompetent people of the powerful families, they are usually kind of pushed into politics since they cannot manage the, 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 the humongous farms that they usually own, the, the, the the wealth of the family since they suck at uh, managing that kind of stuff um uh, it's it's kind of like in the circus you know what are clowns clowns are failed acrobats usually they are when when an acrobat uh, like when someone fails to become an acrobat like they they lack the capacity they they are afraid of height or whatever for whatever reason in a circus they are put to become clowns because that's an easier task than being an acrobat, right? So they are taught to, to be clowns. If they can't do anything else, they become clowns. Uh, it's a weird uh, comparison, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Um, the powerful families, they usually put their retarded siblings <laughs> into politics. Why? Uh, not to screw things up, no, 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 to defend the, the, the family's properties and power. Do you understand? Because since they are not good at managing that, the least they can do is at least be there sitting in some political position to when the family needs some vote that either blocks an attempt to, to seize anything that they might uh, hoover over or to to 
or to gain something, then they go at, at the members of their family, uh, the retarded folk that they, they let them get some money, some good money, good enough to, to keep them wealthy. Um, you know, say, hey, now we need you to vote for this measure or to vote against that measure. Uh, and that's basically what I've seen at least. Um, so my educated guess, this is why I can even say it's an educated guess, is that uh, that might have been how the the thing went with the Ron Paul situation there. But suddenly, because I don't really think people heard much of Ron Paul uh, before Ron Paul came along with the election thing. Um, now, Trump, Trump, back to the topic, Trump, he was kind of a, a finger against the system from the American people, you know, because he was basically like when he opened his mouth against any one of, of the Republican Party, it was like a big finger from the people who tend to vote Republican. And this is why he became so popular and so fast. Uh, he was literally flipping the finger to any one of them. Uh, and because the, the people who voted Republican were sick and tired of their current situation of flat out cookery, like they were cooks, uh, and they still kind of are. Um, you know, they whine, 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 oh, look at this, how can they do that? How can they get away with it? But then they don't do anything, you know? Like, uh, oh, the, the, the Democrats are, uh, are kind of rioting. They're literally burning cities down. And uh, what should we do? You shouldn't do that. Oh, no, please stop. I mean, and they don't. Like, why should they? Like, they literally put... Um, <sighs> what, what happened in the United States can be considered as a coup. As a coup d'etat, you know, they, they literally, um, they literally put an unelected president. Biden, you can say whatever you want, but there is enough evidence that, by the way, the courts refused to accept. The courts, they did not see the evidence. They refused to see the evidence when evidence was presented. So is there evidence? Yes. But did the court see it? No. Therefore, the journalists can do their thing and say that there was no evidence. But Biden is an unelected president. What is going on in the United States, and if you doubt me, all you need to do is drive around the, the White House area if you are allowed to do that, that is, uh, and you'll see barbed wires in the walls of the White House. Now, that would be unthinkable. That would be unthinkable. Even when, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, even when the Canadians invaded uh, the US and were the Canadians or the Brits and set fire to the White House, it was not barbed wired maybe because of the technology, but you get the point. It was not piped up or something of the sort. Do you understand? But we see it now. Uh, it's still, <coughs> it's still surrounded by barbed wire. Since Biden entered the White House, the White House has been surrounded by barbed wire. And what kind of message does it send to you? That's up to your own perception. But people from outside, people who've seen military juntas and uh, dictatorships uh, all over the world, the first thing that they connect the image with is that, oh my God, there's a coup d'etat ongoing. Do you understand? And we can see now, I mean, there's plenty of evidence that shows that Biden does not have popularity. He does not have the support of the majority of people that the polls that support him, even the polls that used to support him are being forced by the level of sheer incompetence 
of that unelected presidency uh, to push down the numbers because they can't hide it anymore. Uh, the the current administration, I, I would call it illegal uh, in the way that they have been set. And the whole thing about the elections there, they are, they are struggling, they are trying what they can not to let elections fight corruption in the system. It's, it's the darnest thing, like... It's literally what you would see in a banana republic. The United States, I think it has become a corn syrup republic, a corn republic. It's not a banana republic, but it's a corn republic, corny <laughs> republic. The Americans literally have become a corny republic. You know, first they lost, uh, first Clinton created some rules that kind of forced the banks to loan money to people who clearly couldn't pay um, loans. That was during the Clinton administration. I'm, I do not recall the name of the, of the law and papers about it, but most Americans seem to, every time I mention that uh, in conversations I have in the web, most Americans from both sides do know the name of the specific laws that Clinton set in place uh, that forced the, the banks uh, to loan money. The banks didn't want to, but then Clinton kind of said, hey, if you don't do, uh, <laughs> it's a great bank you have here. It would be a shame if somebody uh, sued you for... Uh, you know, and put it in the media that, oh, you refuse to loan money. The bank, this evil bank refuses to loan money to the poor. Oh, what a horrible bank. Uh, you know, kind of to flare up the population against, ah, don't, if I were you, I wouldn't open my account in such a horrible bank that refused to loan money to the poor and needy people think about the old people who the you know which was not really the 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 part of the population that made loans that they couldn't afford it was really the kind of of the the, the average uh like the around the 30s 20s 30s that would do that kind of stuff and that screwed messed up the banks because then the bank said, but if we do that, we are, we are going belly up. There is no way around. This is, you know, this is one step from a bank run. Um, but then the Clinton administration said, no, 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 no. Uh, if that ever happens, we will refund you. We will pay you. You don't need to worry. We will cover the, the losses that your bank. So the government, the American government threatened the banks with public humiliation to, you know, push people to push away money from such banks who would do that. Um, and, um, and then, you know, it's kind of a carrot and a stick, like, uh, and then gave the promise that if the banks did loan money to, to everybody, just loaned, I need a loan, sure, I need a loan, sure, you know, I can't pay, but sure. Um, gave the banks the, the opportunity, the, the, the capacity to literally, literally, and you can check it, you can check it. Don't believe me, just start informing yourself better. You'll see, um, literally giving the banks the ability of creating money, of making money, type, and go. Here you are, here's your loan. Uh, in 10 years from now, you'll be probably living in the streets, uh, in something that didn't even exist back then, as far as I know, um, in what now is is current currency in the U.S., the the tent cities, the horrible tent cities. It's worse than a favela. It's worse than slums 
in Asia and South America because it's not even a slum, it's not even a house, it's a tent. Americans haven't really realized the gravitas of the situation in their country. They, they haven't realized how bad things are. And then what happened? Then during the Obama administration, Obama kept the, the promise that Clinton gave the banks when the banks started go, going belly up because they couldn't, they couldn't sustain themselves because they had basically, and this is what happened, and I know it's scary, uh, but, and it's uh, news that you don't hear, so you'll be shocked and you'll say, no, no, that's not true. Because you've been conditioned to believe that that would be an impossibility in a country that, by the way, already had a depression once, at least once. Uh, so it happened before, it's nothing new. And the reason that uh, it didn't happen again in a long time is because after it happened, the, the banks and the government, they created a ram. The economists, the financiers, financialists, uh, they created a ram uh, a mold to keep the economy in check. And one of the things that kept the economy going or strong in the US and in any country who, that does it is to not loan money to people who cannot pay. If you do that, you could create, at the long run, you, you will end up creating inflation. Banks will start breaking because they cannot legally, technically, make their own money do you understand it's the government but if the government gives the banks the right to literally create money out of thin air then that's what happened in first inflation and then depression and then if nothing is done to prevent it then a country breaks financially economically it collapses so Americans haven't really realized what's <coughs> what is going on there. It's it's horrifying. If you are aware, if you have seen how things can go bad in other countries, you know it, it's sad to see that the good American people are going to suffer that much, and are already suffering. Is not that going to? Why do you think one of the reasons that they are using so much drug drugs today in the U.S. One of the reasons is that. It's the level of pain that the people are. Like I hear that Americans have two, three jobs nowadays. Uh, that's not right. That's actually not a sign of a healthy economy. When a family, in order to sustain itself barely, uh, under threats of being evicted of their own house, have to take more than one job. Do you understand? And that's inhumane in many ways. Uh, not to mention their wars and the veterans from such wars. It was not just Vietnam. You know, you think it, those wars without a reason don't don't break the, the spirit of a person? When they come back home, you know, and they need to readapt. And apparently there is no support, no actual support in those cases. <clears throat> and that's when they don't come in coffins, as they do a lot. But the media in the United States never really show the amount of coffins that come back from from those wars that they are currently in. To the point that today they need to make deals with the Taliban that they don't keep, of course, uh, which enhances the Taliban influence in the whole region. So, which I find funny because, you know, the oppositors of, of uh, gun rights in the U.S., they always say, oh, do you think uh, uh, your, your, your rifles and, and your, your hand arms are going to keep uh, government from retaliating? Well, seem to have worked for the Taliban, you know, with their, with their shitty AK-47s there they, and their... And they're usually malfunctioning uh, rockets, rocket launchers. Um, they seem to be to to be doing pretty well. Thank you very much. Um, and it's terrible. 
And all this because of the level, the current level of absolute banana republic corruption. You know, again, it's corn syrup corruption in that case, in the US case. It's corn corruption, it's corny corruption. You know, it, it, it's so massive that it has become corny, the level of corruption in the US today, to the point, as I pointed out previously, and back to the topic again, that the, the, the current... Uh, <sighs> The current administration is trying what they can, is fighting tooth and claw to keep to keep the corruption in the election, the the uh, the, the illegal ballots, the the, the fake uh, votes to to you know like. They, they are fighting what they can to keep it going because now everybody's kind of waking up. Hey, wait a minute. That, that didn't sound right because, you know, well, yeah, I only saw kind of supporters of that uh, thing and, and suddenly, what? They won in my... Nah. So, and that would, would... With the Trump supporters being harassed, being chased in the streets, being beaten up, you can see still footage. Uh, to this day, uh, if Google hasn't deleted it. <laughs> ah, it's so crazy, so crazy. <coughs> but uh, I guess it's the natural path of things, you know, like. And the only thing that those massive corporations will achieve will be that they will be beaten down eventually by, t by the unification of small uh, new emerging companies that will just beat them up because the at the end of the day, who controls the market is the consumer and there is no way around it. And as hard as, as those big companies and and big government is uh, are, are trying, like you have to remember, for instance, in the French Revolution, the government in France was massive. It was huge. It had a, a king. It was big, I can tell you that. And what happened to it? It collapsed. In the Soviet Union, the government was everything. <laughs> and what happened? It collapsed. So, you know, regardless of the size of the government, as scary as they look, there is a point of no return where any massive, huge, threatening, uh, scary government has to collapse because... Laws of physics, amongst other other things, force it to. You know, you can't continue to do absurdities for too long before you crack as a as a government, because there's a limit to it of how far you can go in destroying your own people. But this is all, and it's crazy, because that I learned when I was studying at university and, and uh, the people who were studying uh, politics or social, not really social, there's, there's a name like uh, the future diplomats of a country. And I bumped, like, I, I saw the books that they were reading and I found some of them very interesting. And I bought a couple of, of books um f from from the the sector of the people who are still studying to to become diplomats and it was very interesting because there was this book called the book of lord shang uh which basically is the foundation of the chinese legalist system and uh Lord Shang uh, was recommending, like literally demanding, he had the power to do so. Um, as one of the advisors of, of the emperor, uh, you know, he, he, 
he was defending certain things under the belief, under his belief, that making people weak make a strong government. So a strong government is good. So in order for you to have a strong government, what you need to do is to make your people weak. And that came from a guy that just 20 years, 10, 20 years after, was tied up to... And he had absolute power. Like, he instituted the laws of the land and everybody had to, to, to obey it or have their heads chopped off. Um, only to 10 or 20 years after be torn down, have, have his limbs tied to four different horses, and each horse uh, slapped to go to run into a different direction, tearing him in four pieces, in four different pieces, if not more, uh, alive. Um, so you see, uh, again, back to the problem of a strong, pow all-powerful state or, or politicians, you understand? administrations it doesn't matter how big and scary you are if you make things that are f naturally like that, that are against human nature then regardless of what you believe in the consequences you know are dire uh, because he is considered correct me if i'm wrong but what if i'm right uh, the father of Chinese legalism and he was torn to bits 10 20 years so just like fascism isn't that weird survived around 20 years and then it collapsed and oddly enough uh, Mussolini the creator of fascism what happened to him again I mean you tell me if you are wiser than me do tell me what happened to Mussolini. He died in very similar fashion to the father of the Chinese legalist school. Uh, so if you are in doubt if such systems, centralization systems, systems that believe that keeping people down will keep your government up, you are very mistaken. Um, because every country that does not uh, give power away in order to uh, have more effective, uh, more direct, more I, I, the, the name, the words in English escape me, but to have more direct control over, not control, but to to have a lighter administration, a more effective, a more speedy administration, uh, fails. Like, um, if you can't do that, the tendency has always been to collapse. Lord Shang was all-powerful. He was so powerful that he put, he, he put the son of the emperor, one of the sons, one of the princes, um, under death penalty. And of course, the son was not killed. You know, instead, his tutor was killed. He was blamed for the lack of... Um, because the, the son was... Like, did not follow some rules or some laws that Lord Shang put. So that's how much power Lord Shang had over the emperor. Now, what happened to him once the emperor passed away? And this is the lack of vision that politicians usually have. They're so sure of their ideas that they forget the long run. Because they believe rather than conclude logically and rationally based in... And now we don't even have the excuse 
Because back in those days, what, 2,000, 4,000 years ago, I don't know, when that guy lived, you tell me. But um, we, we might not have had such a, a sharp knowledge of psychology as we have today. Uh, so today there, there isn't even an excuse to attempt to try a, a centralized, uh, all-powerful government. We don't even have that excuse. And we had the entire 20th century as guinea pig for the consequences of such kind of government. The more power you give to a government, the less effectivity this government is going to have. It's going to become like dinosaurs. There is a theory about the end, the possible end of the dinosaurs, or at least as the emergency of um, emergence of um, of the mammal class of of animals, because mammals were small, uh, the dinosaurs seem to have two brains. Some dinosaurs used to have two brains to try to control their massive body. So what would happen was. Uh, a certain class of animals realized that if you just nibble uh, the, that humongous animal, um, it would take him, it would take the animal a couple of minutes to respond to the pain of your nibbling. Um, so it would take a couple of minutes, up to two minutes, I think, uh, before it sent the message to the brain through their neural system, and then two more minutes, two and a half more minutes be, to, to send the message back. So you had four minutes of biting, chewing away um, uh, gracefully as much as you wanted before the animal would respond to your chewing away of their legs or bum or whatever you wanted to chew on. So that's a theory, at least how mammals actually emerged from nothingness. Um, so consider this, and this has been happening consistently in all massive, all powerful governments. And it saddens me to see that this is what those weak governments that we currently have, they are weak, uh, are doing today. Governments that do, do that won't last long. It doesn't matter how much power they think they have, and they, 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 in order to prove it, they do cruel, horrible things to people. Uh, the more they do it, the worse it's going to be for them. Maybe they don't care because, ah, when that happens, I won't be in power. I will be retired. Oh, it will come back to hunt you, it will. Um... And it saddens me. It saddens me to see that we want to attempt that path again. Have we learned nothing? Have we learned nothing from the 20th century? That certain things simply don't work? It doesn't work. It won't work. It's already not working. They are already starting to backpedal. And all the censorship, now they are pretending they never said that or they never did anything and that's so cowardly ridiculous because sure look people's memories are short but still they're not stupid so the assumption that people are stupid by default just because they voted on you and you know yourself to be a bad person that's not proof enough of people being stupid it's proof that you are probably evil but unless you were put there for, by your family and you are kept there by your family because you have to do your family's bidding, as it seems to be the case based on what I've seen so far. Um, but other than that, it's, it, it, it's just a waste of time, human uh, suffering and anything really, because the end is loss. The end is absolute loss. 
But it's funny, you know, because Keynes kind of promoted those, the, 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 the economical side of this. Um, and when Keynes was interviewed by a, a journalist uh, from an economic uh, finances magazine, and the times that uh, journalists actually knew uh, their, 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 the, the topic they, they worked under, uh, looking at you, gaming journalists, um, and the journalist after Keynes explained the basis of his policies that are very similar that the, today's governments are trying to follow, um, the journalists inquire, but what about 50 years from now? To which Keynes replied, as far as I remember, well, I'll be dead then. So even Keynes knew that the ideas that he was promoting were bound to failure. Because that's not a, <clears throat> a very rational explanation about a failed economical system that you are trying to implement. That's a lame excuse. So you, you basically are kind of agreeing that you just want to raise havoc and that you don't really care about the consequences. You just want to push it forward. And here we are today with very weak governments thinking that they have that level of power. Now it's very interesting to see. I think that the main reason that people haven't risen up yet and just tore them down because Europe is famous. Europeans are famous in doing that. If you think it's just the French Revolution, like the Dutch, the Dutch, you know, those cute people, dandy people that we, we know the Dutch for being, they literally ate, they, they cooked and ate one of their politicians around the time of the French Revolution, a bit before, I believe. So those very uh, rational Europeans, like the, the, the Danes, uh, for instance, the cute and dandy and sweet uh, Danes that we happen to know or uh, hear about, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, they tore down, like because the government had closed doors to make a secret voting, and that's uh, that's unconstitutional to to the Danes. So they literally tore down. People don't talk about those things nowadays. It's sad. They should. Um, the people literally tore down the the centenary trees that they had in front of their parliament and used it to to crush the the parliament's door, and when they came in, they beat the heck out of all the politicians that were inside there. So those stories we don't hear about, but that's Europeans for you. You know, they take it, but at some point said, man, after five, 10 years of this, I, we need to do something about it. You know, they, they're a bit slow in the move, but because they don't want to do what they will eventually have to do because when the people revolt, even Machiavelli, even him said that when people revolt, the reason that they elect someone is for them not to take their own actions. Do you understand? The people are being nice when they allow politicians in power. The people are being nice because when the people revolt, What they do usually tends to be brutal in nature because we are still savages. We have always been animals. People from certain religions don't believe, no, we are not animals. We are, we are superior to animals. <laughs> not really. Depends, depends, but we're still animals.
regardless of what you believe. Again, belief. It's not fact. Fact is, we are animals. We bleed like animals. We mate like animals. And it doesn't matter how you paint it. You know, it's just a vernis. It's just like, you know, a, a wooden table that for you to keep it for longer, you kind of put a vernis on top of it. So it kind of holds on for a little longer. Uh, that's, that's our level of civilized. It's just that two, three hands of paint over the wood. The wood still wood and you can still scrap the, the, the paint away. So it, it might look different, but it can still be scrapped away. So why do this? Why? We had systems that were functioning in a beautiful manner. Why destroy the trust of the people on government like that? Like they are doing today. Why try that? The consequences are going to be disastrous. Because again, and I know it seems impossible. Oh, they would never do that. No, they will. If you keep this on for long enough, they will. For now, they have more gadgets to, oh, I can play a game. I can do this. I can do that. Can watch porn or whatever. You, you have, but that doesn't mean that at some point, and I speak from experience, I used to play games a lot, but at some point you kind of, okay, I played enough games. Now what's going on around me? Let me do something about it. And things completely change. I haven't played games for what? Six months at least? Last time I played a video game? Six months or something about that. So I'm telling you, and I, because I kind of am more intellectualized and all that, I, I might be one of the first to stop being entertained all the time. Uh, and I'm not even one of the most active on this sense. Most people, most people are way more active than I am. So, but because maybe because I'm more intellectualized, I have realized or I have stopped, or I lost interest in, in the entertainment as I used to have. So I'm just wondering, you know, because I'm one of the first to, to, to start looking at the world and not caring about entertainment anymore. But actually, entertainment today bores me to death. I can't sit still. Um, I need to be doing something around the house or, or anywhere else. So I end up losing most of the movies, most of the series, because I'm doing something. Do you understand? I'm either cleaning up or, or I live by myself. Um, or... You know, like preparing the food. I like, I love to cook, uh, as you can see. Um, or doing something, you know, folding something or drawing or, or painting or doing something. I, I can't focus in entertainment anymore. Why? Because I had too much of it. And our brain is wired in such a way to realize at some point we have to give something up. So... It is really just a matter of time before people revolt. And I recommend governments to stop. Please, for your own sake, if you want to keep your power, stop tormenting people the way that you're doing. It's ridiculous at this point. It's ridiculous. Because the consequences are going to be horrible for you, not for the people. And you know what's going to happen. What always happens when this kind of stuff happens. When a government overstretches its power to the point that people lose the trust in government. The people's reaction is brutal. 
And what happens next is the emergence of, an, of a new tyrant, of a tyrant who the people love, who will strike you down. And sure, you will eventually defeat it or not. But it will give you immense losses that you could all have prevented if you just didn't push it too far. And governments today, they pushed it too far. And sure, they are not showing the images of the amount of people who are protesting in the belief or hope that if they don't show the images, people will stop protesting. No, what is happening is different. Because they are censoring, because the people who are there protesting, they can see how many thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands are protesting in their city. And they connect with each other, regardless of what you think that they do. And when they see that there is no media, nobody's talking about them, and people are censoring them, the media is censoring them, they will do what always happened. And it's weird because those people in the media especially, they usually have PhDs or master's degrees in psychology. Hollywood, all the, 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 the gray suits there, usually at least, at least a master's degrees in psychology. So regardless of their level of knowledge of psychology, they're ignoring the whole human reaction to repression. What will happen is, and what is happening, not what will happen, we pass that stage. What is happening is that people, not me, I'm too small to, to do anything about it. And I have too many problems I need to get rid of before I can even think about doing something about that. But the people who are out there, I'm not out there protesting. I would feel ridiculous. But the people who are out there protesting, and they can see how many people are out there pro protesting, and they can see that the government they're protesting against is trying to censor them, and nowadays not just censor, but to threaten them and punish them. It's the worst thing you can do. Worst thing. That's going to bite them in the, <laughs> in the tail. Badly. Because that's what always happens. You know, what is going to happen? And what is going to happen? What is happening is that people are radicalizing. Now, how do the hell would I know that? Because I've seen, because I, I, I kind of worked in my life, you know, I kind of have a life. I've seen and studied, I've seen how many people are protesting already from 10 years ago. How many people, and more and more, and on a daily basis, protesting around the, the parliaments in the countries I have lived in. How many people are protesting in the streets? Because it's inevitable. You go out, you see it, right? I mean, I'm not searching for it. Just bumps passes through me. Do you understand? So I kind of have to see it. I have no choice. But <coughs> those people, because of what the government have been doing in the last two years, they are radicalizing. I dare to, to conclude based on the evidence that I've seen, that most of those people, if not all, are being radicalized. Because what you create with censorship, especially because of the way we have been educated, what you are creating is dissent. You are creating radicals. Our current governments are creating radicals. And maybe they are doing that thinking that they will be able to control them. Yeah, good luck with that. That's what the French parliament also thought before their king was 
lost their head and the revolutionary government heads lost their head too and everybody who came after unt uh, until there was a populist yes populist dictator who the people loved and because the people loved the country had peace again However, they were some of the most cruel people. Like, the French people loved Napoleon. And it didn't matter that for Napoleon to raise the power, one of the first things that gave him some support, some leverage in the political sense was that he was one of the only commanders who actually went against the people. He literally, like he was a uh, captain or no, tenant of artillery or something. And he, he put uh, his cannons and blasted away against the population who was just roaming around, had been roaming around for what, a year? Uh, destroying and killing anyone who they, they didn't like. Uh, and because he did that... <laughs> And some other things he did after that, the French people fell in love with him. So be careful if you are alienating the very people who voted for you. If you disappoint them to the point that they revolt. Because they are going to love your enemy. And they are going to put your enemy in power. And your enemy will be a bloodthirsty maniac but would still be better than you and that's the crazy part because napoleon gave more fair ro rules and laws that actually we're still following today around the world and that was due to napoleon because he was unflexible on this sense and the people loved him for it so remember all this started because the french Monarchy decided that the people were too stupid uh, so they could just play them for fools with the creation of a fake constitution and a fake parliament that would only vote for the interests of the crown. Same thing in Russia uh, before it got hit by the, the, the communist revolution that then was hit by the communist economical policies that destroyed them and when the occidental governments realized that they were flat broken and only depending in the welfare money that the the occidental the blackmail money they were being the occidental governments were being blackmailed from war if they just kept buying the 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 extremely uh defective products from 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 the soviet union yes uh, there is more to it you you can do the research and you'll see uh when margaret thatcher got a hint a hint that the the soviet government was literally depending on the money that they sent to avoid war she passed the hint on to the American government and then to the other governments, Occidental governments, who were being blackmailed, literally. And then they said, you know what, we're not going to pay. We're not going to buy your products. There you have it. And then it was a question of months before the Soviet Union collapsed. You know, so we didn't, we stopped buying the bluff, you know. So we dared them and they collapsed. And China is, it, it, it's crazy because I, I am 50 now and I've seen a lot uh, of what happened during the Cold War. And now I see what's going on in the world. I can kind of realize that we are not, China is not far from what happened to the Soviet Union. They're very close to that. It's very similar but my major pet peeve today was that 
governments are, are going too far. They are pushing people too far. People, most people today seem to still be under the belief, for whatever reason, that it's on them and not the government. When they finally realize that it's not on them, it is in the government, they are, what will happen might be brutal. I hope that people are better educated today so they will do that in a more refined manner. However, based on what I've seen so far in history, um, the natural consequences of such weak governments trying to exert force over their population by abusing, by pushing the population over the edge, taking too much advantage, let's put it that way, the population eventually has enough. And when they do, things get ugly. They get really nasty because the people's response is unpolite, let's put it that way. So let that sink in. Caveat emptor, like, look, I'm not doing anything. I'm just saying, hey, I wouldn't do that if I were you because of what will happen and what is happening. People are radicalizing. The people out there who have been protesting, they have seen each other. They know how many of them are. And then they click on the news and said, oh, just a small group of people. Do you understand? They say, really? Really, bitch? Um, they are realizing that they are way more powerful, regardless of what the government is forcing the media to say. They know. They, all they need to do is go out and look for themselves and see what's going on. Now, they don't know what to do right now, but they are figuring it out. And it won't be pretty for any government who pushes it too far for too long. I can tell you that. And it, it's mind-blowing. Uh, but it's logical because those people in power currently are weak. Because if they weren't weak, they wouldn't feel the urge to do what they are doing, would they? They wouldn't need to, right? So, yeah, may that be a lesson for us all.